Hello and welcome to IBJJF q and I'm your host, John Medina, and joining me today is none other than the six-time world champion himself, Professor Lucas Lepre. Professor, how are you today? Hey, John, I'm doing really well. Thank you very much for the interview. I really appreciate it. You guys have been doing an amazing job. Nice. It's a pleasure to be here today. Great, great. So uh, let's get started. Um, I wanted to start off by saying that when I think of Lucas Lepre, you know, two words come to mind. The first is consistency, and the second is resilience. You know, so um, let's start off with consistency because you're someone who's been at the top of the lightweight division since you got your black belt, right? 2007. You win the worlds, and since then you've been consistent at the podium at all your major to tournaments. So that's like 10 years and a massive amount of new black belts coming in every year to test you and challenge you at that at that lightweight division, right? Um, What's made Lucas Lepre so consistent? John, I think it's like, uh, for sure, is the motivation, you know, focus and, you know, discipline. And uh, I think like when, when you want to achieve something great, you know, I have to work mm -hmm. really hard for that. And the hard work as well. You know, I have been doing the hard work, you know, for a long time. You mm -hmm. know, and then I also like, you know, have been working all these years. Uh, I didn't let my train going down, you know, I always keep it up, the hard work. And I think, you know, I think that consistency came from the hard work, right? And the focus that I have, like the goals that I, I wanted to achieve and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the motivation, you know, every year I wanted to do better. Mm. And uh, I think with that uh, mentality, you know, keep uh, myself uh, doing great things and be very uh, consistent. Yeah, yeah, that, that um, your goals, actually, that kind of brings up the resilient side of Lucas Lepre. So I'm just going to go down the list of your world titles. So in 2007, you win your first world title, and it's also your first year at Black Belt. Then you don't get another world title until 2014. Then after that, you, uh, in 2015, you and Michael Lange close out the division and he takes gold. Then 2016 gold, 2017 gold, 2018 gold, and 2019 gold. So before that dominance, there was this like seven years of trying and not succeeding at the Worlds. Don't get me wrong, you, you were uh, placing at every other major tournament. I actually have a list right here of the, of the other titles. Three Nogi World titles, one European title, five Pan titles, one Brasileiro, one Nogi Pan title, this is all in between that seven year period, but still couldn't reach that world title, right? The, the, at the Gi. So um, I guess that takes a lot of resilience and focus to overcome something and overcome this like adversity to keep trying to achieve your goal of, of you know, multi-time world, world champion. Um, I, I guess my question is, what kept pushing you to win? Because you're trying to reach this goal of making history in your division. Or was it to uh, achieve, achieve this type of greatness that athletes in other sports have, you know, like a Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Tom Brady, Tiger Woods. These are all athletes that have like um, won so many titles, but have also had to overcome adversity and resilience in certain years of their career as well, right? Yes. So John, like, uh, you know, like I have like, uh, I'm a guy that, you know, I do, what I do, I try to do my best for everything that I do, right? So when I won my first uh, Black Belt World title back 2007, uh, was like, I was very young, you know, and I achieved that, that goal very early on my career and uh, was amazing, you know? And then after that, I start on the next year, having a lot of things, you know, and uh, I moved from Brazil to US, Mm. I know I I completely changed you know the life that I had in Brazil to to US and then I had to adapt it and then plus I started get like a, a new sponsorships and uh, and then start put the pressure on myself you know I have to uh, that I have to perform uh, the same way that I was doing before or even better right and then uh, that pressure that I was putting on myself uh, wasn't very good so and then I I couldn't. I was performing so well, but I wasn't performing the way that I was before because of that pressure. 
that I have to show to, to the new job, you know, that I was put in my mind, you know, like uh, that the pressure that I was put in my new job that I, I, I had here in the U.S. and plus the new sponsorships. And, and then I, I was a freeze, you know, I was a, very afraid to lose my fights. Uh, so that I was like, I was winning other tournaments. I was winning Pan Ams, you know, Europeans. I was like, no gi pens, like your words. But every time that I, I was uh, about to fight the awards gi, and then I was have that, you know, attention and uh, and that uh, I was freeze. I was, I couldn't do my Jiu Jitsu, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was for years, as you said, seven years, you know, of that pressure. And then, but something inside me was like, man, I want to break hacks on my division. I want to do like the greatest uh, lightweights in the history, you know. Mm -hmm. I was very fo focused and determined to, to do that. You know, that I was dreaming about, you know, every time. And uh, and every time that I, I was failing, you know, uh, on the semifinals, you know, on quarterfinals, I said, man, I can't do it. You know, like inside of me, like I I knew that I could do it better. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, you know, back 2014, I started like reading some books, you know, uh, listen to some speech, you know, mo motivation speech and, and try to find where i could adjust because on uh, my technical part i was doing really good on my condition as well you know but i noticed that my mental part was the problem and uh and then i started to get more confidence because i i i started reading that books and at least some you know speech the guys are say like you guys have to believe it until the end you know mm. so you have to take some risks as well and uh and then I start, you know, uh, going to with, with that mentality and helps me a lot. You know, I start grow on the tournaments. I start to like come back on back 2007. You know, I, I didn't put the pressure on myself, you know, and start, I start that get even more like confident, you know, like all the position that I was doing, I was able to uh, finish, right? I was able to be precise is the is the is the name that I I use a lot. I, I, I start to notice that everything that I is my jiu jitsu, right? Everything that I was doing as the passing or the sweeping or the back take, I I I had like the opportunity to to go. I, I didn't miss the opportunity, right? I just go and neutralize my opponent right there. So and then I start to notice that I could do this. Uh, even better with building my confidence, you know, nice. and then that's start building that 2014 when I start to win again. So, and then after that, I just see the way, you know, the way I have to, to, to do it, to keep going, you know, and then after that, I, I keep winning, you know, every year I close out with my, my friend, Michael Lang in 2015. Then after that, I, I kept winning, you know, all the world, all, all the world championships with that mentality, you know, and and uh, and keep working hard the same way that I, you know, I was doing my entire career. So and then I just keep going. And besides that, I kept, you know, working on my mentality as well. That for sure is like a, it was a, a big change. For me, I turned the key, you know, and to achieve, you know, uh, to achieve like the, the greatest, you know, so that was the, is the like, uh, is the way that I found it to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, was, you know, worked really well for me. And then I was able to break record on the division, you know, and that was, was the dream. The dream came true. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that's so inspiring. Uh, I got to sign up for the Lucas Lepre book club then <laughs> and see what yeah. you do. Uh, I'll probably get a list later after this interview. Um, okay, let's do it. So like another thing I find fascinating about this this uh, period where you where you won your, your four last consecutive world titles was you went to Charlotte in about 2014, 2015, if I'm not correct. Yeah, so uh, end of 2014. Okay, right. So... 
uh, that makes it even more uh, fascinating to me because you didn't have this huge team or this these you know this surplus of black belts to be training with all day. So how did you manage to stay so sharp for all these big tournaments? Yes, John. Like uh, yes, when I moved to Charlotte and opened my own academy was a huge challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, when I won the 2014 words, I was in Atlanta at Alliance HQ. And, uh, and then I decided to open my academy and then I just, oh, I, and then I opened end of 2014. And uh, I started like, you know, work even harder on my, on my specific training, on my mindset as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I knew already that would be really hard to run the academy and uh, and competing on the highest level on, the, on our sports. And uh, I knew that would be a challenge, you know, but and then I embraced this challenge and say, OK, let's uh, do it. You can do it and keep that positive mindset all the time. You know, I didn't, you know, uh, doubt on myself, say, ah, I don't know if I can, you know, I, I didn't do that. I stay positive all the time and say, okay, you can do it. You can go and break records. You can do it. You know, like all the time, like I was kind of coach myself all the time because your mind is, is everything. And if you think that you cannot do it, you're not going to do it. If you know, like if you think that you can do it, you're going to do it. So you're going to find the ways, you know, you're going to find the ways to, to go through the, the obstacle, obstacles that you have it you know like maybe some issues some injuries whatever that you have it you know so your mind you know is going to guide you right so it depends how you're going to have your thoughts right mm -hmm. and uh, that was the way that I, I i thought on that time and then also like uh i came from berlândia minas gerais brazil mm -hmm. so my city on that time uh wasn't very famous jiu-jitsu you know have like very small group as well and my first uh, pro professor elan santiago he always like taught me taught everybody you know that was there at that time how to train smart and then i was exactly that what what i did here in charlotte you know at that time that i didn't have much high level guys here i started doing a lot of uh, specific training shark tanks you know i started putting myself the way that I could, you know, and then, and, uh, and it started putting me very confident, you know, very confident, ready to go. You know, I didn't feel, uh, I didn't feel like, uh, unprepared, right? I was just like feeling ready to go, very hungry, even though like I was, I, I won already, you know, the world championship, but I was very hungry to win again, to break records. That was, I think is the, is the motivation right because once something motivates you when you have a goal and uh you you don't stop until you reach that goal right that was like one of the the the, the things that i have uh, on my on my life on my on my career as well so uh as this you know break records on the, the lightweight be on the books be on the rjj uh history that was like, you know, my, my main goal. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It seems to be paying off. So, um, yeah, it's very, it's very, it's very painful, uh, but man, it's worth it. You know, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, you're going to work hard. You're going to like, you know, so free, you have like a, a lot of, uh, resilience, you know, you still be away from your family a lot of times, you know, you have to be a little bit selfish with her, you know, yeah. because you just think about you you all the time but uh you have to be like this you know to to achieve like a great things you have to to be a little bit selfish you know right right but uh, on the same time i also see you as somebody who you know takes this time to spend time with your students and with your family you know you definitely lead by example like I've seen pictures of you going on bike rides with your students or playing in the rain with your daughter. And you kind of always carry this very uh, calm and collected type of uh, confidence about you. You have this Zen-like demeanor. Um, is, is that, would, you, would, would that uh, like inner peace come from jujitsu 
And how important is it for you to show your students this mindset and mentality of leading by example? Yeah, I think it's, I, you know, in my opinion, there is no other way than lead by example, right? Uh, man, I think it's really important, you know, like I, Jiu Jitsu taught me this, you know, like uh, teamwork, you know, and also care about each other, you know, like uh, be calm as well, right? Uh, I'm a person that, you know, uh, I love stay at home with my family, you know, like give them all the attention that, you know, they, they deserve it. They support me so much, you know, on my, on my goals. Actually, like, you know, my goals are their goals as well, you know. So, as I said, that's come like the teamwork, you know. So, family fights as one. And my students over here are awesome as well, you know. Like, they're helping so much uh, with my training, like, uh, outside as well. Like, we stay connected. I think it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I show them the way have to, like, when you want to, have some something very bad you know like when you have your goals you want to achieve some, some something you know you you need to be focused you need to be uh, uh determined you have to be uh you have to have a discipline you know i show them the way that i work mm -hmm. you know they have to work as well if they want to achieve something right can be in the tournaments or can be outside they're like I don't know, like study for lawyer school, medicine. So they have to go and study really hard to to become like a doctor one day or a lawyer, you know, like, you know, it's not just, you know, in jiu-jitsu, you know, I try to show them we have what students over here is not a competitor, just a competitor students, you know, but we have 80% of my students just come to enjoy jiu-jitsu, learn the art and, you know, and do jiu-jitsu for fun yeah. and and jiu-jitsu is like has taught me a lot about this is teaching them a lot you know and i try to pass this to them as well the passion that i have you know uh for the art you know so that's a you know for me is really important as i said leading by example you know is is only the is the only way right 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 yeah okay so Lastly, um, I wanted to show you this clip from one of my favorite matches in IBJJF competition that you've done. Um, and it's time to tap into the mindset of a champion. I really love to hear your input on this. And the reason I chose this match in particular was because everyone knows you're, you're a master in the lightweight division. You know, you have some of the best sweeps and guard passing out of uh, anyone in the world. But this match in particular, I believe, showed your genius. Um, your whole model is, is uh, you know, be precise, right? So I want to show you the match of uh, open class when you went against the 400-pound safe. Can you see that on your screen? Yes, I can. Great. Okay, so let me go ahead and start it. Now, what I, what I really liked about this match um, was that so your whole models be precise, right? And I think that yeah. this match shows that better than any other. For starters, your opponent is like 400 plus pounds or close to. So any mistake you make can end up severely injuring you, you know? Or you, uh, but what you did in this match was completely flawless. Every position that you make, the timing that you go from position to position, and the transitions you make to, the, to, uh, to get the finish, um, you know, you didn't have any sort of flaws in between there. So everything was truly precise. Uh, so what was just your strategy when you're going in against somebody like this? Because you didn't have an opportunity to even know you were gonna go against him because the way the brackets were set up, and this is your second match of the open class. So how much time did you have to prepare and what, did, what were you even thinking to, to go against somebody like this? Yes, John, like, uh, actually, like, I, I wasn't ready to fight the guys, like, big like, like him. So my first fight also, like, was a, a big guy as well. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't, like, big as uh, Seth. Uh, but uh, when I saw that, uh, actually, like, uh, when, he, when he did his first match with, uh, what his name is? Uh, the guy from Sao Paulo, I forgot his, his name, but 
Nata, Natalie. Anyway, so, and then, actually, I didn't see their, their fights, but I thought already that I would fight uh, the guy from, from, from Sao Paulo. He's a, he's a big guy as well. Oh, Nelati. You're talking about Nelati? Yes, yes, him. Mm. And then, but I, I didn't see their, their fights. And then, uh, and then when they called me to, to do my, se my second fight, And then I saw Seth. I said, "Man, okay, what a, what a, like I, I wasn't ready, you know." And saying, "Okay, so I'm gonna, and I'm gonna keep, you know, him away from from me. I, I, I cannot like mistake it. I have to be everything that I'm gonna do. Have to be pre precise mm -hmm. because you know, I, I thought, okay, so it'd be hard for me to uh, exchange takedowns, right?" Uh, he's a judo guy too, so I said, okay, so the only way now I'm gonna pull guard and keep the distance and uh, let's see, like, play spider guard a little bit, keep him away from me. And uh, you see that I'm playing like spider and one hand on the collar, mm -hmm. that's like you know, the guard that I, I like to play a lot, but uh, to play uh, from there when he mistake it, or like when my opponent mistake, I start going to the omoplata, that was the idea. You know, going to the Omoplata. Uh, but and then eventually, when I he wasn't able to pass, and then he stand up. As soon as he stand up, I, I hit my sweep that I like, you know, most is the sit up guard. Yes. Because on the sit up, is the sit up guard, I have like few options. I can go to the single, or I can go to the one leg X, X, deep, you know, so start opening a lot of opportunities. So, and uh, and then I just hit it, you know? So that's like, but I like, he surprised me a little bit because I thought that he wouldn't stand up. I thought he's gonna stay on his knees. Yeah. But as soon as he stand up and then I was able to hit this, this setup guard and then I, I was able to trap one of his sleeves. Yeah, right there. Over there, is like, and then I sit up trap one of his sleeves and then i blow and then i throw him to the side uh -huh. and then i come up when when i come up he's gonna try to you know escape try to push me away i just keep my balance yeah and then as soon as he mistake boom and then i went to the back exactly so even actually i was i, I, I was thinking to mount but uh -huh. then he keep turning And then I just put my hooks in. As soon as I was there, I said, okay, I cannot mistake now because he's found up on bottom. I'm, I'm going to be in big trouble now. Yeah, you even let go of the hooks. So that right was here, the mentality. Right? Yeah, so and then I put my hooks out because I was too forward. Mm -hmm. I was like uh, feeling that, you know, uh, he could like, you know, uh, uh, slide me off from his back and stay on top of me on the side control or north south so something like that and then i gave up the hooks and then i start taking the back again you're trying to and put him I on his side like, right here yeah, exactly i put one hook in and then i was holding the opposite side i was holding his collar mm -hmm. and then i was trying to drag him to the side but he couldn't move and then uh and then i think he's gonna stand up i think yeah. after that yeah but what so really, I, yeah oh sorry go ahead yeah so that was very like calm you know i didn't rush because i i i knew it you know any mistake like would cost me mm -hmm. the fight uh so it would be like if i found ball it would be like even though like i was like six points ahead so wasn't very smart for me to end up on bot again so i i thought and then now from when he stand up I try to cross my leg over there, keep holding. On that time, I was, I was a little bit afraid that for him to, Fall. to throw me, you know, like yeah. a takedown and then and land on me. That probably would gonna, would gonna hurt me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then I stay there, hang a little bit, put his legs a little, a little bit tired. You know, keep pushing him forward, then to the side at the same time. 
But and then got one point that I thought, and then I thought, okay, now I have to take a risk, and then I gonna, and then I try to drag him to the side. I think that's gonna be now. So let me see. There's a here. there's a part right where he gets he switches his grip to where bring your head like almost like a headlock, and that's when you go for exactly the, for the exactly down. exactly. That, yeah. That's why I did that. You know, as soon mm -hmm. as my head went to outside, actually to inside. Mm -hmm. And then I try to to drag him hard as I, as I could. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen his other matches. Well, from twenty twenty Europeans and from before uh, he fought you, but he can he's injured people, you know, just because of his pressure. You know, I've have seen him crack yeah. people's ribs, and so I just thought it was it was really awesome how you stayed on his side and you made sure that you were never fully in front of him or fully yeah. anywhere to be to be you know smashed. Exactly. What made you go for the for for the bow and arrow? It's because like when I like, if you if you come back a little bit, mm -hmm. I want to show you like uh, because when I was I noticed that when I was pulling him to the side and then I was grabbing the foregrip, mm -hmm. my right hand was on his uh, uh, collar on the on the other side. Ah. And then and then again one more time. Can you come back a little bit, please? Well. Right. And then as soon as I, I was grabbing his arm, before that, I was grabbing his triceps. As soon as I put the hook, I dragged him a little bit. When he posted his left hand on the mat, and then I and then I went with my left hand and go to the collar straight. Ah, uh, yes. And the right hand on below is pulling the collar down. To, to Exactly. Get... And then as soon as I feel the opportunity, then I just go to my other side and grab his pants and then i say okay down is over yeah you could feel it sink in yeah but i don't know if you noticed but i was i wasn't going forward before i fall that but i was going kind of to diagonal mm. uh, so what's I was the reason for that? A little... yeah it's because like if i go forward maybe he can take my arm that is grabbing the collar mm -hmm can put like over his head you know so i was leaning a little bit more to my right side and diagonal than forward mm, yeah. I, I was leaning i was leaning kind of back you know mm -hmm. so that way my left arm that was stroking him wasn't like escape from his head very very nice all righty it was really nice you know fight and challenge so so sometimes not very often that i fight the opens but sometimes i like to challenge myself because the open division is like is before the away division mm -hmm. and sometimes it's tough you know to to do both because i'm already cutting my weight and then i can feel like weak and you know so yeah, that's, that's why I don't fight much opens, but I like to train with he heavier guys. I like, I know I train well, and but if the if the weight was before the open, for sure, I could like fight more. Yeah, I was always wondering like uh, how how much it took in uh, to consideration. You're you're cutting weight this whole time to make lightweight, and then you're going against people 100, 200 pounds heavier than you. It's got it's it's really crazy to me to think. Your mindset, like you said, your mindset in there. So you just have to know that you're just confident enough to know your abilities, right? Yeah, I think I think it's important. Or you know how like uh, confidence you is, how uh, well prepared that you were, you are. You know, I think is is a big part. When you go to the open division, you have to be ready to face everything, right? You can, you know, fight with small guys, big guys, you know, strong guy like yeah. You know, and maybe you can get hurt as well. Have to have this in mind as well. But it's part of the game, you know. I think you mm -hmm. have to prepare and and be ready for all the all the risk that you have it when you fight the open division. Yeah, yeah. Well, professor, that concludes uh, today's Q and A. I want to thank you so much for giving us your time and letting us tap into the mind of a champion. Um, before we go, you know, is there any? Anything you want to give a shout out to or let the people know what you have going on? Yes, you know, I'd like to thank you, John. I'm JJF. You know, you guys have been doing an amazing job. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, uh, 
And then also I'd like to thank my uh, sponsor, uh, Shuro family, you know, my coach, KP, my students here in Charlotte, and my team, Alliance. And, uh, you know, and uh, be ready, you know, for the next year, you know, keep, you know, prepare. Hopefully ne next year we're going to be back in action and uh, and have the World Championship, right? So everybody's looking forward for that. You know, we're, we're missing this year. I know, like, everybody's very sad right now. Say, ah, oh, we don't have the world, we don't have this and that. But now it's, it's good, like, for that. It's also, like, you know, start working for other projects, too. And and uh, and be ready, you know, for the for, for the next year. You know, I think that is, a, is a, a time that everybody can reflect and see what they can do better, you know, as an athlete, as a person, you know. And, and uh, it's good to always look inside and, and uh, talk to yourself all, all the time and see what's the goal it is, what's the next, you know, what's the next for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, have always have the goals in life is important. Nice. You know, great way to finish the, the interview. Um, thank you so much. And we can't wait to see you back in action whenever that may be. And uh, appreciate it, Professor. All right. Thank you, everybody. Peace.